It's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You will stir the test. From the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. Still give me just a tad bit more. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. There is a word from the Lord. From the King James Version, you will hear these words. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Now listen to this. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now those of you who read it and hear some preaching, let's hear that again. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Against him. I want to talk about God's response to the enemy's attack. God's response to the enemy's attack. Give me just a little water in that glass. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this privilege to stand for the second time today and to proclaim your word with power, with accuracy, and, dear God, with a commitment to be true to the scripture. Bless us now. Raise the roof in this house. We realize many individuals, many families are under attack. But God, your word says that you will raise up a stand. Speak a word in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Unfortunately, the most memorable thing about Hurricane Florence was her, what, torrential flooding caused by the continual outpouring of rain. Days before Hurricane Florence devastated the coast, many individuals used sandbags to reduce the flood water damage. The goal is to allow the sandbags to serve as a barrier to divert the moving water around the bags and not through the sandbags. Unfortunately, what we learned, Brother Murphy, about flooding with Florence is regardless of how many sandbags you put up or how big of a dam you put in place, water is powerful and it has a way of getting through around and over the sandbags. What are you saying, preacher? Floods engulf their path and anything in their way. Isaiah intentionally used the word flood in the text to show us how the enemy comes in. And in this text, he says, the enemy comes in like a flood. I wish I had somebody to help me. He used that word intentional. Because if we would think about how he comes and uh, how frequent he comes, uh, are y'all with me? And then the power bef behind his strategy, we would understand that Isaiah is right. He takes it a step further uh, and reveals to us that the enemy, just like floodwaters, has a way of coming in to destroy and wreaking havoc in our lives. Someone here this morning well together knows what it looks like. When everywhere you turn, you can see the enemy footprints. Unfortunately, you've come to the realization that this unfriendly world we live in, every day, Brother Apple is troubled, is a troubled world, and we not only have to deal with personal attacks, I, I wish I had somebody to help me, personal problems, but we deal with them on every front. But what we have to realize is that the enemy is deliberate, and the opposition often seems personal. At home, among your family, at work, among your co-workers, in your personal relationships, the enemy has a way of gushing in. I wish I had somebody to help me. 
One unknown artist who tried to paint like Norman Rockwell said, unlike Rockwell, the things that cannot be put on canvas are my thoughts, my struggles, my fears, my doubts, my dreams, my goals. They are in the midst of a fierce battle. From the time, uh, Thressa, we wake up in the morning and our head hits the pillow late at night, we are in combat. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. In a war zoom, uh, that's not easily won. But the enemy, because the enemy is our constant adversary. Yeah. Interesting, we can see examples of this in the scriptures. In 2 Kings chapter 6, the Bible says Gehazi rose up early in the morning and looked to the hills. And what did he see? The Syrian army had set up soldiers surrounding the area and had plans of making a sneak attack. And all Gehazi could see is that they were surrounded by enemies. So he ran to the prophet Elisha. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. After hearing the report, Elisha was not alarmed. He sent his servant Gehazi back and simply told him to look again. In Exodus chapter 14, we find another example. When the children of Israel were making their mass exodus out of the land of Egypt, they were headed to the land of Canaan, or what we call the promised land. After having been in bondage for 400 plus years, while they were on their way, they heard the hoofbeats of Pharaoh's army, their enemies in pursuit of them. Though Pharaoh had let them go, he wanted them back. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, just stay with me, a vast army came up against Jehoshaphat. They were coming in from both, all four sides, four different armies in pursuit of Jehoshaphat's army. Are y'all with me? But God sent a messenger and the personality of Jaziel. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. And how many of you know that when our backs are against the wall and we feel like we are at the bottom of the barrel, God always sends a word. And you need to understand that word does not always come from a preacher. Does not always come from an apostle. But God uses individuals in a personal way to encourage us, to motivate us, to uh, to, to help us to understand that what you're going through is going to pass. All you got to do is hold on and keep the faith. I wish I had somebody to help me. But Jay-Z had a unique message. And the message was to Jehoshaphat. He said, and I quote, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. He said, you don't have to fight in this one, but you have to take your positions. Rem Resmus, when I studied these three passages in harmony and looked at their differences as well as their commonalities, I saw something. In each case, they were outnumbered. There was no human answer, and they were overwhelmed and terrified. Now, I'm going to keep saying that until that crowd in the back wake up. They were outnumbered. I know time changed, but you got out of rest last night. There was no human answer, and they were overfired, over-terrified, and overwhelmed. Is that where you are this morning? You're looking at your situation, and it doesn't look like there's a way out. It seems like there are more of them than they are of you. I wish I had somebody help. And the truth is, you are overwhelmed and terrified. I'm going to say it until y'all wake up in here. I said they were outnumbered. There was no human answer. And they were overwhelmed and terrified. Quiet. I'm going to keep saying that until y'all talk to me. I said they were outnumbered. There was no human answer. They were overwhelmed and terrified. Pastor, why do you keep repeating that? Because I want you to know that the enemy had uh, a surprise attack. And thought that because they were outnumbered, because there was no human way out, and because they were overwhelmed that they had won. Ah, oh, but the text says. That when the enemy comes in, like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. I wish I had somebody to help me. Preachers, I know what that feels like. I know what it is to have the enemy breathing down your neck. I know what it is to have the enemy coming with every possible strategy, like flood waters that cannot be stopped with sandbags. Your prayers like sandbags aren't seemingly working. Your meditation, like sandbags, aren't seemingly working. Your efforts, like sandbags, don't seem to be working. 
you haven't been sleeping well. You've been trying to do a spiritual assessment to see if you've done anything wrong. But the Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against it. I want you to notice three things. And that is three illustrations, rather, that all of the attacks were intentional and both were designed to catch you off guard. Uh, so those, I've got some good news. And that is, though the enemy think they have caught you off guard, they have not caught God off guard. He is aware of every move that the enemy makes. And can I tell you this morning that he's walking Satan on a leash. Y'all didn't get that. If you've gotten that, you'd be on your feet. I said he's keeping Satan on a leash. That means Satan can raise his ugly head, but God says you can't go but so far. I wish I had somebody to help me. Uh, I'll give you permission to shake the bush, but you can't tear it apart. I, I'll give you permission to aggravate and agitate them, but you can't go but so far. I wish I had somebody to help me. The Bible says that the Lord will raise up a standard. You've been wondering how am I going to handle this one? It's not like the previous battles. This battle seems more intense, fiercer, and more destructive. And it seems like this one has been designed to make you lose your mind, destroy your future, and leave you in a state of hopelessness. Preachers, y'all up here, y'all to help me. I want to notice that Isaiah was very specific. For those of you who are saved and declare you're sanctified and Holy Ghost filled, he didn't say if the enemy comes in like a flood, but he says when, saved or not, it's coming. Sanctified or not, it's coming. In church or not, it's coming. Can I get somebody to help me? But even though he said it's coming, simultaneously while the enemy is coming on one side, on the other side, God said, I will raise up a standard. I wish I had somebody. Does anybody here know that while the devil is messing, God is blessing. While the enemy is tearing down, God is building up. And he said, I'll raise up a standard. I know what you've been asking. I know what's been keeping you up awake at night. You've been wondering, Lord, why me? Why is my back continually against the wall? Why am I always under attack? Well, the Lord spoke this, and this is what you need to hear. It's your walk with God. It's your stick to itness. It's your love for the Lord. It's your anointing. It's your obedience. It's your prayer life. It's your desire to serve the Lord. The devil doesn't attack those that belong to him. I wish I had somebody to help me. But when you decide that I'm going to live for the Lord and I'm going to uphold what he would have, when you decide that my help comes from the Lord and you're not ashamed to tell somebody, for God I'll live and for God I'll die, you will be under the radar. So can I tell you a secret? Take it off today. Preacher, what are you talking about taking off? What you need to understand is this, that the enemy is not your friends. The enemy is not the person that has something ugly to say to you. The enemy is not the person that's stabbing you in the back. I guess y'all have said, I don't get that preacher. Notice what the text says. The, the text lets us know that God will raise up a standard against him. Y'all didn't get that. The puppets that the devil <laughs> is using are just those who are willing to submit to the ways that please the devil. And when you come to understand that the battle is not against them, but the battle is against him, y'all not getting this. Satan is using these individuals to agitate you, to aggravate you, to make you mad at so and so. But the Lord said tell you this morning. The battle is not yours. 
Don't hold anger any longer against one individual because that individual is just the conduit, just the tool, just the individual. I know what you're saying. I'm going to preach it a minute. I didn't sign up for this. Maybe not, but if you say yes, Lord, and commit to following him, you'll become the enemy's target. Can I get somebody to help me? If you weren't doing anything, you wouldn't have to worry about anything. But because you are anointed, and because you've given your life over to the Lord, the enemy has you as a target. And your life is the battleground. But the Bible says, come on, Deacon Nelson, help me, that the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I wrestled. And Brother Zappo, you're going to see how Baptists worship in just a minute in a real way. Can I get somebody to help me? You see, I I question. Uh, I start bouncing it off, reading one commentary after another. And then when I finally shut it all down, the Lord said, if you look to me, I'll give you the answer. I said, Lord, this is the only phrase that the Lord will raise up a standard. It's the only time you'll find it in 66 books. And I said, Lord, what do you mean raise up a standard? And this is what the Lord said to me. It is a war cry. It is a battle plan. And that is that when God gets ready, even though the enemy has uh, sneaked himself in and think he has uh, manifested a, a surprise attack, God is saying, Terry, if you read through the Bible and look through all the instances where there was a cry and a battle plan, God says, I never repeated a battle plan. That means that every time there was a battle, I came up with a new way of handling an old problem. I wish I had somebody to help me. So what God is saying that the battle plan that he has for the Jonah family won't work for the Henrys. And it won't work for Bathsheba. Because what God is going to do in your situation, he's going to let the enemy know. Don't you think you've got me under control? Or don't you think that you know my ways? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So tell the devil, bring it on, buster. You might as well get ready. Because the God that I serve has a battle plan with your name on it. The God that I serve is going to pull out something he's never done before. Somebody said and preached, I didn't get it. Well, listen. When Jehoshaphat received the word that he was outnumbered, he called for prayer and a fast. And you know what the Lord did? He said, tell them to get in position. Tell the tribe of Judah to lead the procession. Who in the world would have ever imagined that God would have fought a battle by putting the praise team up front? God told Moses... Moses, where is your rod? Hold it up and tell the people to march on. Can I get a witness? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God told Elijah, let the armies come. But when they got ready to fight, God confused the enemy. And they started fighting against each other. I want to tell somebody, you just put your trust in God. Let the heathen rage. Let the devil do what he want to do. God says, I will raise up a standard. I'll show the enemy. If God be for you, who can be against you? I'll show the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Want to do it? Want to do it? Is anybody here know? God will fight your battles. He 
He'll turn it around. He'll turn your midnights in the morning. He'll give you joy unspeakable. They were outnumbered. There was no human answer. And they were overwhelmed. I said they were outnumbered. There was no human answer. They were overwhelmed and terrified. What are we going to do? The bottom of the barrel has fallen out. And God said, that's right where you need to be. Because when you come to the end of yourself, God will raise up a standard so that the enemy will know that the Lord is on your side. Back in the day when I was a little boy, a movie came out called Ghostbusters. And they said, who you going to call? Who are you going to call? When the enemy is on your trail, who are you going to call? I hope you're going to call Jesus. This thing bothered me. Because Sonia, again, Modro, he said, you were outnumbered. They were outnumbered. There was no human answer. They were overwhelmed and terrified. And all they could do was stand still and trust God. Preacher, there's so much redundancy today. I want you to hear it. But Chapman, they were outnumbered. There was no human solution to their problem. And they were terrified and overwhelmed. Outnumbered. Yes, I'm going to keep saying it. There was no human way out of it. It's not something you can figure out in some mathematical formula. They were overwhelmed and terrified. But their eyes were on the Lord. And the text said, when the enemy comes in like a flood and tear your sandbags down, the spirit of the Lord, the unpredictable spirit of the Lord will raise up, will lift up a standard. Listen, against him. Pull your lips in. Your mouth poked out. You're mad with the wrong person. The spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard, a new battle plan against him, the adversary, the deceiver, the old dragon, Satan himself. So that means you don't have to worry about folk. You might not have a sleep number bed, I think it's called, or, or Sealy Postopedic. But God will give you rest. Go to bed. Put it in God's hand. And let him raise up the battle plan of how he's going to handle As we stand all over the place. When the enemy comes. And like a flood. I would leave if I was you. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. Against him. Deacons as you're coming. I want to open the doors of the church, but I'm going to do as I did earlier this morning. Have a special prayer. 
those who are not ashamed to come to the altar when I state the condition. You may come by letter, candidate for baptism, or this morning you may come on Christian experience if the Lord has led you. Last Sunday we had two or three individuals that joined.